welcome to the 1985 Ballarat Cup Carnival, featuring the running of the 121st Ballarat Cup from the picturesque Darling Forest Race Course, Ballarat. Your host for this afternoon, Channel 6 Sports presenter, Rob Gaylard. Thank you very much, Craig, and it's a very good afternoon to you. 1985 Ballarat Cup Day, and what a magnificent day we've got. The track is in tremendous condition. It's an exciting day for two reasons. Cup worth $45,000 and it's one of the richest country cups on the country circuit and also the second plus for Ballarat Cup Day for 1985 of course we have two hurdle races on the program 27 acceptors and the club decided to run two hurdle races <laughs> and it's lovely to be here what a delightful day it is and uh, very pretty course and uh, i'm sure that the club will be delighted with the field they've got for the ballarat cup and also for the two hurdle races i think it's wonderful to see well, those outside probably three or four in the cup which i mentioned last night in our turf talk i think it's quite an open field it's very hard to pinpoint and uh, we mentioned before in jenny's show and if you weren't listening to us then there is a late scratching in the cup and uh, it was one that i thought had a fair chance in number 13 cup tie Yes, Ray Pick's had no luck at all, has he? He's had greatness in uh, cup tie here. Of course, cup tie won at Taraugan on Friday, but uh, he looked a chance. He's out. I think we saw one another yesterday about 5.30 at Flemington. Not so many mozzies up here, though, Des. No, well, it's very nice here today. I'm beginning to give 10 to Ballarat for their weather today. I'm sure that it's going to... It's early, you know, daylight savings a bit well, of a nuisance. We've a lot of confidence. Half we usually weather. get tucked up there away because of the inclement weather, but we've had a lot of confidence today. You That's why we're down here on ground level. You knew what you were about, Rob, I tell you. And I tell you, Ballarat, I don't think I've seen it looking better since I've been coming here, which is quite a few years. Recent well, rains, I think, did it proud. Well, we were just talking, Brian uh, and I, before in relation to or Bruce before in relation to the track and uh, being the Flemington track man uh, you must be pretty pleased you wouldn't mind them galloping on that of a morning down there oh this is magnificent truly I don't have not because you're a Ballarat everybody sort of gets a bit prone to say we're in the area we've got to say it's good I I used to when I had horse races I used to come up here and walk the track Ballarat's always been good but I've never seen it better than that I'd like to see him get out of even time Bruce <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with a look at race two on the program for you shortly after this break Racing this time, and have jumped away in a good line. Tagari out in the centre, and fair creature of Begun OK, and so too is just battling and see me rock. Making ground is going through to join the leaders, and further back in the field, Prince Imperial. Back with it was Ty Moran, well back early as they settle properly into stride, Sir Rhythmic, as they go over the first. Prince Lindell is third last, and the Diamond seen back at the tail of the field, and back with him was Rocky's Revenge. They come to the turn the first time, see me rock and fair creature the leaders, going up three wide as Ty Moran. Just in behind those runners was Insignia on the inside was Prince Imperial. Tagari the outside, about three lengths to making ground. A length away Sir Rhythmic, Rocky's Revenge moving past it from Diamond Scene, Prince Lindell. And two lengths last of all uh, was just battling. In the straight now for the first of three. And the leader was Ty Moran, out a half dozen lengths in front of see me rock now. In third place Tagari over on the outside, next came Insignia racing three deep on the fence was Fair Creature, a length and a half further back was Rocky's Revenge, Prince Imperial the rails, two to making ground, a half then to Sir Rhythmic on the inside, three or four lengths further back, Prince Lindell, Diamond seen second last as they jumped the third in the straight and six lengths off last in the field was just battling, past the judge and the leader Ty Moran out still a half dozen lengths in front of Simi Rock two and a half away third was Fair Creature on the inside of Tagari, a length and a half further back Insignia, two away Prince Imperial, on its outside Rocky's Revenge, two lengths further back Sir Rhythmic another two and a half to making ground on the inside of a diamond scene one and a half to Prince Lindell being scrubbed up and a half dozen lengths away last of all is just battling, 1500 metres out and the leader still Ty Moran a half dozen in front of Simi Rock two lengths further back Tagari just shading Fair Creature to the fence 
One and a half to Rocky's Revenge, a neck away on the inside of it, Insignia. Two further back in the field, Prince Imperial. And then came Diamond Scene, the outside, Sir Rhythmic didn't jump that one too well. Making ground out three deep, Prince Lindell spears up between it and Diamond Scene. And a half dozen lengths away, last of all, is just battling. 1100 metres out and Seamy Rock took over here. Seamy Rock, Ty Moran dropped back very sharply there and Seamy Rock a length and a half to Gary. One further back then, Insignia moving up now to join the leaders. Just in behind them, Fair Creature being hard ridden, two and a half to Rocky's Revenge. Then on the inside, Prince Imperial, two to Sir Rhythmic, getting going from Diamond Scene. Ty Moran's dropping right out, passing it was making ground. Then Prince Lindell and last just battling. 800 out and Seamy Rock ahead to Insignia, two and a half to Gary. Three further back, Fair Creature not travelling well under the whip. Behind it, Rocky's Revenge, Prince Imperial. Sir Rhythmic a mile back with Diamond Scene in front of it and well back making ground. Up near the turn, 500 out. The leader, Seamy Rock, a neck in front. Insignia second, a length and a half to Tagari third. They've got right away a half dozen lengths in front of Rocky's Revenge. Fair Creature, I don't think, is going to run a place around the outside, Sir Rhythmic and Diamond Scene. And then Prince Imperial in the straight, two to jump. Seamy Rock, the inside, got away. Insignia hit it hard. Tagari under the whip. Oh, there's one gone, Rocky's Revenge. Then came Diamond Scene at the 200. Seamy Rock comes to the last. He's only got a jump at the win. He's over it safely. Tagari in second place. Then Insignia and Sir Rhythmic. But Seamy Rock 100 metres out as well, clear. He's got the race well and truly won and goes to the line to score well. Seamy Rock a half dozen lengths. Second place him to Gary. Diamond Scene got up to run third. Fourth in the race would have been Insignia Sir Rhythmic. Then came Fair Creature Prince Imperial. Further back in the field making ground Prince Lindell just battling and last in Ty Moran. Let's have a look back here at the rider of uh, Rocky's Revenge and uh, see uh, the rider R. Scrivano is on the track, he's conscious. Ambulance attendants with him. See me rock, number seven. Ridden by D. Cannon, Darrell Cannon, the winner of the first heat of the Meyer Hurdle. Number seven, See me rock first by LC2 out of Rock Rhythm. Raced by Jeff Tawney, Frank Morgan, President and Committeeman here of the Ballarat Turf Club, and J.M. Chatham. Trained by Kay Garland here at Ballarat, ridden by D. Cannon. I do track work first, uh, it just depends what sort of rides I've got and what weight they've got on my breakfast. On your breakfast, so you could have a light breakfast or a heavy breakfast? Yes, that's right. Pretty involved really, how long have you been riding that? Uh, just under three years. Yeah, if, uh, you've left school to ride, now do you think that was a good move? Yes, I think so. <laughs> You're doing pretty well out of it at the moment. Yeah, I'm going okay at the moment. What do you find the best part of racing? Uh, the money. <laughs> He's honest. <laughs> what about the early rises? You get up about four o'clock every morning. Uh, five o'clock. Uh, that's a hard part. Is it? Yeah. Do you go to bed early? Oh, it depends what movies on. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't miss out much of a social life if you can help it. No. I see. Now, uh, do you look after the stables and that yourself, or do you just ride? I only do the riding most of the time. So you get it pretty easy then. Pretty easy. <laughs> Leave all the work up to the Straffords. That's right. What do you think has been the best ride in your career so far? Uh, probably the Senior Cup. Winning that? Yeah, on Rich Brother. That would have been a big thrill. It was. It was a very big thrill. What's your main aim in racing now? Probably like every jockey's aim, the Melbourne Cup. The Melbourne Cup. Now, the preparation for a, a cup, which is usually a long race, uh, I know the horses have to take months and months and months to get fit. What about jockeys? How fit do they have to be? Well, jockeys... They ride all the time, so they're pretty fit. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Lenny Morn, and good luck for today, and uh, we'll catch up with you after the races. Okay, thanks all. First jump about 300 metres away, the light's on. Off. Teakwood out wide began quite well with Bo Cumis and also in the strand and Gwendolyn. Prince Chardon going forward looking for the lead. All Prince is easing in behind them, followed by Ha Ha. 
Moving up on the fence is Sir Rockford. Two and a half away, Rich and Four. And four lengths away, Carapom dropping out to the tail and tied Master Third. Last over the first, they jumped it okay. Trying to kick up on the inside now is Ha Ha and hold out Prince Chardon. He can't do so for the moment and Prince Chardon now clears away approaching the turn the first time. By a length and a half to Bo Cumas, followed by In the Sprand. Getting through the field now and back on the rail is Ha Ha. Two lengths away, Teakwood, followed by back in behind them, Tide Master, Sir Rockford the rail. Then Bo Cumas, followed by All Prince Gwendolyn, a length and a half away, Carapom. In the straight the first time, at the 350 metre mark, over the second in the straight, three jumps, and Prince Chardon just in front by Nick de Bo Cumas, a half away on the inside is Ha Ha. Over the second in the straight, jumping it a little bit awkwardly was All Prince, a length and a half away, fourth now, moving up is In the Strand, as they greet the way in front of the winning post, and the third and final one in the straight, in behind Behind them came Teakwood, two and a half away Tidemaster, followed by Sir Rockford All Prince, a break of two and a half to Gwendoland, followed by Carapom, and six lengths away Rich and Four. Out of the straight, 1750 metres to go, and in front is Bo Cumas now, by a length and a half to Prince Chardon, followed by In the Strand, he works out to be third, followed by Ha Ha, a half on the outside is Teakwood. All Prince now taking closer order, he's going forward, two lengths to Tidemaster, followed by Gwendoland, in behind them came Sir Rockford, followed by Carapom, and six lengths away, Rich and Poor. Along the back of the 1450, three jumps in the back straight, Bo Cumas just in front by a neck to all the Prince who's gone up in a hurry. Two lengths away, third is in the strand. Over the one along the back, Ha Ha clipped that one, Prince Chardon going forward once again, followed by Teakwood, two and a half away, then Tidemaster, and around the outside now, Teakwood is going forward to join Bo Cumas, and in the strand makes a line of three of the thousand. In behind them, two and a half away, Bo Cumas is down. Bo Cumas has lost the rider at the thousand in behind them Gwendolad followed by Sir Rockford and four lengths away Carapum and tailed off as Rich and Poor down the side of the 850 and Teakwood now strode away by two and a half to Prince Shard and an echo away on the outside is in the strand in behind them came all Prince followed by Ha Ha then Tidemaster now called upon four lengths to Sir Rockford four lengths away Gwendolad then Carapum and tailed off as Rich and Poor and the rider of Bo Cumas is quite okay around the turn 500 metres to go two jumps remaining and Teakwood would break away, four lengths to Prince Chardon, two and a half away, then all Prince, followed by Tidemaster under pressure. In behind them came Ha Ha, followed by In the Strand, four lengths away, Sir Rockford. Well back is Gwendoland, followed by Carapum. At the top of the straight, 350 metres to go, two jumps remaining. Teakwood got over it okay, two lengths in front. Prince Chardon on the inside is coming again, followed by Tidemaster and all Prince. One jump remaining, 200 metres to go. They come to the last, Teakwood bungled it. Prince Chardon makes a run up on the inside. Tide Tidemaster getting through the field now is coming quickly. Tidemaster starting to sprint through. He'll get up in the shadows of the post, I reckon. Tidemaster is grabbing Teakwood and Tidemaster has got up and wanted a half length to Teakwood. A half away third was Prince Chardon. Then all Prince followed by Ha Ha. In behind them in the strand followed by Gwendolad. Then Sir Rockford. Last in was Carapom. Rich and Poor. It was Poor. <laughs>